How do you achieve good body position? The answer to that question from a lot of riders would simply be, just copy this guy. It's a decent enough plan for some, but for others, it could be a bad one. And together with a lack of understanding of what good body position really means, all you're going to do is create unnecessary barriers and problems in your riding. There's so much more to consider, so we're going to lay it all out here. We'll uncover what good body position really means, how to achieve it for yourself, as well as avoid the common mistakes so that you can get into a fantastic place with how you look on the bike, but also how you feel on it too. But before we get to the specifics of creating a great body position, let's quickly tackle the purpose of it as a skill, because if you don't truly understand this part, you'll likely end up approaching all of this in the wrong way. If it wasn't already obvious, body position is more than simply offsetting lean angle, and even less so about looking good in photos, but it's okay to like that. The fundamental skill of body position is about creating a stable position that allows you to ride how you want most comfortably and effectively while giving the bike what it wants from a stability and lean angle perspective. This means that the most important factors of this skill are about being comfortable, improving your ability to use the bike and reducing risk. And as we'll discover later, this can look different to different riders all the way up to the top of the sport. So we know the goal, how exactly do we go about achieving that? Well, let's start with where most people do with the specific positions you put yourself in for a corner. And in the interest of not overcomplicating things, here's the simplest way to do that. Notepads ready? Okay, let's go. Have the balls of your feet on the pegs going down the straight and when moving around and obviously moving them to change gear and use the rear brake when you want to. In the corners, you can maintain this position with the balls of the feet on the pegs, but for the outside foot, you may find it easier to hook the heel into the peg, turning the toes outward. For the inside foot, make sure your toes are well tucked away. If they're sticking out too much, they're likely going to limit your ground clearance and lean angle. Seating position is also nuanced. You can sit right up against the tank or a little way off it. I prefer the latter as it stops me rotating my hips around the tank, keeping them squarer, making it easier to point my head into the turn. But really, whatever gives you the best attachment with the outside leg is okay. In a corner, you'll be pulling your outside leg into the tank to create a solid anchor point. And together with pressing down on the inside peg and engaging your core, you shouldn't have to rely on the bars for support, allowing for a light grip that helps you control the bike better, as well as stopping your arms, wrists, and fingers from fatiguing too quickly. With the inside foot, aim to turn the heel back into the bike if you can, helping open the hip and stick your knee out. How much of your backside you slide off the seat will also affect lower body support. A good starting position will be to have one cheek off, but you can go a little bit either way and still be okay. Generally speaking, the more you slide your backside off, the more effort your legs will have to do to support your upper body and create a light grip. So if this is something you struggle with, consider going with less butt off the seat. Moving up the body, as an easy hang-off position to aim for, look to get your head and upper body a little way inside the center line of the bike. It doesn't need to be any more than that. Finally, sit forward slightly to create some bend in the elbows. This will help create a level of separation from you and the bike, which is better for moving around. And with the forearms more parallel to the ground, steering will feel easier too. And if it feels like your wrist is trapping you and restricting throttle control, consider rotating your hand and wrist outward to create more freedom of movement and better control. This is the fundamental basis of a position that almost every rider can achieve in the corner. And that's usually where most advice ends. But body position isn't some static thing. If you don't know how to transition in and out of this position, then you're only going to continue to create problems. Just quickly before we get to that though, if you're a rider that likes learning this kind of stuff and aiming for higher levels, we're currently running a free online training workshop where you'll learn the key steps to bust your riding barriers and go from complete track riding beginner to calm, comfortable and confident high level rider. If you're a development-minded rider, you definitely want to check that out. Okay, getting back to body transitions then. Heading down the straight, you'll be tucked in nicely with the balls of the feet on the pegs, outside of changing gear. Just before you reach your braking point, you want to move your backside off to one side ready for braking. It's much better to do this early and remove it from a place where you're trying to delicately balance braking and steering. As you hit your braking point, you'll sit up. Support yourself through a combination of one or both legs against the tank and your arms a little more straight so you can support yourself on the bars. The heavier the braking, the more weight you're likely to have on them. This is normal. As you begin trailing the brakes off and committing to the corner, you'll begin committing your head and upper body to the corner too. How quickly you commit your body will depend on how quickly you steer. A good way to think about it is that you want to reach your maximum hangoff position at a similar point to reaching your maximum lean angle. Now you're in a corner, you'll be adopting all the advice we just talked about on creating a good hang-off until you can begin standing the bike up a corner exit. When you do that, don't rush to get yourself back onto the bike. Wait for the bike to be near upright before making a conscious effort to bring your head into the middle of it. 
and be very mindful of what you're doing with the bars in this moment. Yanking on them to heave yourself back onto the bike is a surefire way to pull the front wheel out of alignment, sending you into a tank slapper. What you do with your backside now will depend on what's coming next. Long straight, wait until the bike is upright, then bring it central. Another corner going in the same direction, keep your backside in the same position and just move your upper body. Another corner in the opposite direction, move from one side of the seat to the other in one movement as the bike becomes upright. And remember, all of these movements need to be smooth, being mindful not to grip too tightly and jerk yourself around. Why can't I say that? Okay, yep, yeah, just heard it. When it comes to being smooth, your body movements are just as important as any other control. So all of that should give you a very solid base to start from, but there's still some ideas that riders have which I think create unnecessary difficulty and confusion, and we can make this a whole lot simpler when we fix them. First, peg and body steering. Some riders believe that pressing down on the peg leans the bike into a corner, but this isn't true. Just in the same way that pushing forward on the handlebars isn't going to make the bike go forward. That's not how the physics work. Now, sizable shifts of the body will do enough to destabilize the bike and affect its line, but these effects are minimal and difficult to even control, so ultimately they're in no way a substitute for steering the bike with the handlebars. For simplicity's sake, think of body movement and steering as two different things. Body position and movement for stability, offsetting lean angle and allowing you to better use the controls. Handlebars for steering into corners and picking the bike up out of them. Approaching it like this is going to give you more conscious control over your direction, while simplifying how you think about body position and movement. And second, stop trying to perfect body position. I know there's going to be people that watch this who will argue how riders should be doing things differently, like getting your head lower, maybe moving your backside a little bit more, or slightly angling your elbow six inches to the left, whatever. But in my 15 years of riding and over 25 watching racing on TV, do you know what wasn't a common denominator for speed? perfect body position, whatever that is. History shows us that there are plenty of ways to get it done, and you can still go very, very fast without looking like the best riders in MotoGP today. If you can get somewhat close to the visual position I've just laid out while adhering to the most important factors of body position, you can set that to one side and focus on the skills that are really going to make the biggest difference for you. Having said all that, MotoGP is fast becoming its own category when it comes to body position technique, and riders are now taking things to new extremes as bikes evolve and competition heats up. Check out this video here to see how. So how do you feel about body position? I'd love to see how you approach it in the comments down below. But outside of that, thank you so much for watching this one and I will see you in the next one. Take care.